Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at the vehicles of World War Mode, or the ones which are going to be available when it comes to the challenges of World War Mode. So far we have had two vehicles which have presented themselves, and it looks like these are going to be the two main ones which are going to be uh, on offer when it comes to World War Mode. Now unfortunately we do not have a way that these are going to be claimed. If it's going to be the same as last season, these should be kind of challenge uh, vehicles, so you'll be able to compete, uh, sorry, complete certain challenges per operation, and if you do enough challenges, you'll be able to get stars, and once you have enough stars, you'll be able to get, of course, uh, stuff such as these vehicles. Uh, so, let's get started. Uh, once we know that information, I'll make sure to update, but this video is just about the vehicles themselves. The first vehicle to have a look at is the M60 AMBT. This is a upgraded M60, by the Turks, or specifically a Turkish company, the Standard uh, Bio. And uh, the idea of this modernization program was, try, uh, was to try and create an economical main battle tank, or as it was known, an affordable main battle tank, the AMBT. It was supposed to increase its combat effectiveness of the M60 uh, to a level roughly equivalent to modern main battle tanks, and the way that they did this was they improved its engine, it was given a new 1200 horsepower diesel engine, it was given a modern fire control system with a ballistic computer, and also independent stabilization of the aiming uh, line through a digital gunner's sight. It was also given a new smoothbore M256 120mm gun. If you don't know which gun that is, that is the same gun that is on the M1A1, and also the tank's protection was increased slightly. They installed some solid uh, hull side screens and also tower slat screens which to be honest are not really going to do a lot in game but obviously are much more anti um, anti infantry weaponry uh, stuff and then also the uh, tank got a new electric turret drive a new surveillance optic uh, on it and uh, if you can see on the top there it was also given a 25 millimeter automatic cannon on the commander's turret if you want to see a better picture of that it's probably uh, this picture right here, which shows the little uh, spud launcher, uh, which is going to be on it. So therefore, the M60 AMBT is going to be probably the most um, most modernized version of the M60 that we have in game. It's getting pretty much every part of it from the standard M60 upgraded, you know, including, of course, even just the guns on the top. So the main upgrades, though, which are going to affect um, stuff are, of course, the 120mm gun and also the um, uh, engine of the 1200 horsepower variety and since this is a 2000s vehicle uh, specifically 2011 when this project was started I'm pretty sure that um, this vehicle will have thermals. I'd be incredibly surprised if it didn't have thermals. They also say that the M60 AMBT is perhaps the best tank that has ever appeared in the game. Uh, when, it, when I'm guessing they're referring to a gift vehicle. Yes, it says the best prize tank that has ever appeared in the game. In everything except security, this budget MBT can be compared to, with the American Abrams of the first productions Series. So they're going out their way to say this is a better vehicle than even something like the Macava Mark IIb. And yes, this is going to the American tree. This has been confirmed by Stoner. Uh, somebody asked, uh, Kamikaze, in effect, he asked just to clarify which nation is the M64, and Stoner says USA. One of the things uh, that is also confirmed in this article is not just this crazy machine, but also the fact that World War Mode is going to start on the 1st of July. So if you're looking to get your vehicles, make sure you have them ready and raring to go for the 1st of July for the World War Mode season, Road to the West, uh, which is what it's going to be called. So the fact that we have uh, this M60, the M60 is actually looking really nice. Um, the only thing uh, that I can say is it looks pretty much like a glass cannon. It does have some extra armor on it, but if it's sporting the M1A1's gun, this thing's probably going to be around 9.7 
9.3 or 9.7. So its armor is going to be absolutely trash. Um, and therefore, um, it's going to get beaten up by stuff which obviously shoots it. But at that level, there are a lot of vehicles that do that. So there are a lot of vehicles that um, obviously don't have a ton of armor. The XM1 being the prime example for the Americans, uh, which run around uh, like crazy people. The main difference between something like an XM1 or an Abrams and the M60, though, is the layout of the crew and how kind of easy it is to be able to knock out an M60, even with this additional armor. We'll have to see how the armor does against a bunch of different machines. My guess is it won't do very well, and this thing will have to heavily rely on its gun uh, when it comes to actually fighting uh, general uh, enemies. So let's move on to the next vehicle. The next vehicle is an IL-2 version, and this is one I thought would come into the game in a different way, but it's still really nice to see it. Um, this doesn't really fit, fit the theme of the uh, World War mode. Obviously, the theme of the World War mode is the Road to the West, uh, which is a more modern operation style uh, but now we're going back to world war ii for our aviation gift vehicle so this is actually from 1941 this is an il2 and it is the m82 version uh, in the game we have the su2 um, or the SU-6, which has access to different uh, engines on the platform. Now it's time for the IL-2 to get its turn. And generally, when it comes to new engines for the Soviets, it normally uh, is attached to one thing, and that is the fact that during Operation Barbarossa, when the Soviets realized that they needed to make as many things as possible and to try and get as much stuff in the air as possible, they were trying to adapt to different ideas all the time to try and fit uh, with you know the current plane designs and this is one of those versions basically in July of 1941 uh, when Operation Barbarossa you know happened um, the realization was that the IL-2 the AM-38 aircraft engine might have a few issues of getting produced uh, quickly so therefore uh, with these possible issues on the horizon Sergei Ilyushin who of course was the designer of the machine, he decided to adapt the Sturmovic engine to the more common M82 engine, uh, which uh, would be uh, used by many other machines. So in a very short time, the aircraft engineers on the Aleutian uh, Design Bureau, they built a prototype attacker aircraft, which tested with this new engine. And the prototype also featured a much anticipated defensive turret um, with a position for an air gunner. So this was was one of the first um, one of the first machines which actually had a defensive gunner on it when it came to uh, the IL-2. Uh, so this will probably be between something like the first IL-2 and the second IL-2. So therefore, uh, they created um, the IL-2, um, which had the uh, M82 engine. The main differences between it were, of course, the back gunner that you can see there. It used a 12.7 millimeter. A UBT machine gun and it had armored glass around the turrets, but what it didn't have was any engine protection. So they pretty much just took off the old engine, the AM38, they slapped on an M82 and didn't add any protection to the engine and just said, Bob's your uncle, everything is fine. And uh, the uh, new engine also required the installation of an updated propeller, which you know is completely fine. And by the spring of 1942, there was a prototype of the M28, uh, sorry, M82 IR engine, which appeared, and this was better suited for low altitudes, from which the attack aircraft was operating most of the time, and also the flight characteristics had also been pr uh, improved. But by that time, the production of the native AM38 engine was normal, and there was no need to modify the IL-2 with M82 engines anymore. So this thing really is kind of a Frankenstein machine. 
which was designed out of desperation uh, because of worries that may happen to supply lines when it came to the Soviet Union. And this is something which actually happens, you know, quite a lot in wartime. Uh, you try and adapt designs to what can be produced in the most efficient way um, because of the fact that you never know when your supply lines have been cut. So the main uh, differences between this machine and, let's say, an IL-2 uh, version, uh, the IL-291 specifically, it has a slightly lower speed and also lack of engine protection. Also, it has the turret. Um, <laughs> but the fact is, this engine is slightly less powerful than the standard engine that the IL-2 in the game uh, had, so therefore it has little perks to it, but mainly um, you're going to have less engine power, and that's something that the IL-2 relies on to keep into the air. Another thing is it doesn't have the updated guns, so you know how some of the IL-2s have access to 23mm, which are really strong in the game because they can actually pop heavier vehicles when it comes to AI, such as medium tanks. This one is stuck with two 20mm Shivaks and two 7.62 Shivaks, uh, so therefore you're going to be going after armoured cars, AAs and howitzers a lot more. And when it comes to its uh, missile and bomb mounts, or rockets and bomb mounts, that should be, Generally, this machine will have exactly the same uh, as pretty much all of the other um, standard IL-2s at the bottom. You can see a nice picture of the uh, M82 engine right there. So, yeah. This machine um, is a little bit of a Frankenstein's machine, I think is the way to put it, um, and so is the first one. You know, the M60 with the massive upgrade package on top of it is definitely a machine which is, um, well, made for purpose, I suppose, and it was one. Also, something I did forget about with the M60, it was one which was sold or designed to be sold to minor nations or foreign operators um, to, you know, basically give them an efficient but economical MBT style. Uh, so yeah, those are the two vehicles that are going to be on offer for World War Mode Season 3, and the season does start itself on the 1st of July, so be ready, make sure to watch this space to see how to get these vehicles. Hopefully we get something similar to last time, where all it is is challenge events, so therefore everybody can participate. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, E. Love Goat, J. Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe, Eugene's Terry, and also A. I'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.